Hey folks, welcome back. This is part three of the skiff project where I take this skiff and I turn it into this. Okay, folks, so we're back at the skiff project. It's been a long time. I know you guys have been waiting and you guys have been saying, when are you gonna make another video? Well, now's the time. So I've been busy working at the hospital in case many people didn't know, I am also a nurse and we had this COVID crisis, but I'm sure you guys are done hearing about that. So we're not gonna talk about that. We're gonna focus on the good stuff. So here's a quick little recap. In our previous episode, we put the new deck in. We laid down the fiberglass, wet it out. We put a little nose cap piece in. We cut spots for hatches and we did transom repair. Okay, so here's a look at the flat skiff project. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this old bumper rail. I'm not gonna have one on the boat. I'm gonna end up actually putting cleats in certain spots and then I'll just use uh, bumpers kind of like what I have on the seawall here so that if my friend's boats come it doesn't get beat up see there it broke off so here's a look at the track moved it there's the rivets that are left and I'm just prying off the track as I go. I'm thinking I'll have the electrical here. And what I'll do is I drill the hole right there and a hole right there, and then a hole on the inside right there. And then I'm gonna end up running this PEX tubing through that hole to this hole, and then to this hole. And that will allow me to have wires ran along the side gunnel all the way up to the front of the boat for running electrical. Now, this will become the wire tube for electrical wiring and it will run into here, which I got some water in here right now just from the rain and stuff. Um, so I haven't created seals yet. These are temporary hatches. I'll actually have better hatches that are gonna drop into here, same as over here. Um, but now I'll be able to have a battery right here and I can have the electrical running into there and it can run all the way through the bait tank and up to the front of the boat. Um, I could have lighting up here. I could have a bracket for a trolling motor up here. Whatever I want to do, I can do by having the electrical be able to be plumbed in. Right now I just ended up drilling the holes and then I'll end up sanding out these surfaces and then I'll fiberglass over it. And then I really need to do some cleaning because this boat has gotten filthy. Um, this tree just drops everything on it. Okay, so we ended up sanding down most of the surfaces on this boat to kind of get down to some of the raw fiberglass and to get rid of any gel coat that was there that was chipping or loose. And now we got kind of a raw, kind of almost like a, just a, a blank shell to be able to work with. So I got some of the same fiberglass cloth that I used on the top deck here. I got some extra and I'm gonna just wrap around this pipe and put like another layer on the floor and then I'll have to bore out the drain hole right there um, through the other layer so that that way uh, the boat still self bails. So there's kind of a thin little gap 
between this floor that you see here and another floor which is the bottom of the hall so right here is a drain there's another drain up there and all the water runs to the back of the boat and out of this little piece right here and then i'll have a bilge pump in the back okay so i ended up getting a bilge pump fitting Okay, so we have test fit our 90 degree through haul fitting and it fits great. We're gonna remove it because we're not ready to put it in just yet. Okay, so now we need to get some acetone and we need to wipe down the areas that we sanded and prep them for our layer of fiberglass, which is gonna cover these two tubes that are on the gunnels. Okay, so this is the fiberglass and we currently have it cut and shaped. So I put little cuts here and that allows me to make that curve and it just overlaps a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is, you'll see it's even tapped in to the sides here. What we're gonna do is we will end up laying a pre-coat of resin, polyester resin. It's the FGCI general purpose polyester resin. We're gonna lay a pre-coat underneath. We'll lay this fabric in and then we'll soak it from the top layer as well. Okay, so we're using the general purpose resin and we're end, uh, we're wetting out the fabric and it's working out pretty well. We're gonna keep wetting out this fabric and then we should be in good shape. Okay, to do my sanding, I have one of these polisher sander combos on top here. That's a lock, so you push that in and then you turn this, uh, this head and that's how you take the head off and put a new one on. So right now I have a five inch head and it has a Velcro backing. So this is just Velcro and it attaches on so you can quickly swap between pads. Works really, really well. And I like the five inch head because I can get into all the areas that I need to. So in order to do the Joko properly, I gotta take this pulling platform off the back of the boat. You'll see I have a big pulling platform there. I have to be able to remove that. So just taking a foot head. Finally got that bugger off. Whew. That pulling platform did not want to come off. I was bending bolts just trying to get the dang thing off. Okay, but now we can sand this down, get a nice clean prepped surface, and then we can put our gel coat on. So in backyard boat building, it's always good to remember to wear your safety protection gear like flip flops and shorts. <laughs> So right now we're going in the fridge and I'm grabbing my gel coat. So the reason why I pre-chilled the gel coat is because by pre-chilling the gel coat, I get more working time out in the floor to heat. Okay, so now it is time to give this boat a pop of color. We're gonna be using FGCI brand Seafoam Green Exterior Gel Coat, and it happens to be brushable, so we don't need a spray gun to apply it. That's the mixing chart there for the MEKP. This is the MEKP, 
You want to use a low percentage of MEKP if it's really hot outside. Otherwise, that gel coat will harden before you get to use it all. Here is a look at the brush, the tub, and this is the mixing tool that I plan to use to mix up the gel coat. This little device here allows me to measure the thickness of the gel coat. And this is very important. This is Sanding Aid Wax Solution. You only put Sanding Aid Wax Solution in your gel coat when you're doing your final coat of gel coat. So right now, this is my first initial layer of gel coat, and I'm gonna lay it on as thick as I can because actually I found that it actually lays down really nice with the brushable gel coat when you load up the brush nice and thick. So I'm laying it on pretty thick, and I'm kind of avoiding going over the same spots too many times because all that does is pull the gel coat back off. So. This gel coat actually has great self-leveling properties. It really levels out when you lay it on the boat. So for a brushable gel coat, I was kind of shocked at how well it looked. So once I cover the whole boat, I can end up mixing up another batch later on and put a second coat on. And I can do a third coat, a fourth coat. I can do as many coats as I want, but on the final coat, I need to put wax sanding aid in the batch. So after gel coating, here's a look at the bucket. And it kind of feels a little bit almost like a plasti dip on the thinner part. And then when you feel the thicker portion, it's like hard as a rock. So I mean, that's gel coat for you. It's uh, much more durable than, uh, than a paint. So you can see it even has a little bit of flex here. So anytime you are going to end up doing some gel coat or fiberglass work, you need to make sure you have plenty of acetone because you use that to wipe down the surfaces before doing any gel coat or fiberglass work. You want to make sure you remove any oils. Here is some white gel coat that I ended up mixing up. This gel coat is the same brand and same type of gel coat as what we used for the bottom of the boat, which is the sea foam color and I'm mixing up small quart size batches and I'm just doing that so that that way the gel coat doesn't set up before I can use it all. Here I'm actually doing inside the hatches and live wells. This is a new manual jack plate that just hit the market and I thought it would be perfect for this particular skiff because I wanted to keep this skiff relatively simple. I didn't want to have a lot of electrical components. Okay, so it looks like my uh, EVA decking came in. We can open up these and we can end up getting them on the boat. So 
on this point in the build, I ended up finding this on Facebook Marketplace. I had to buy it. Don't tell Katie how much I spent. We'll keep that a secret. Here's a look at the grab bar getting installed. Here is a look at how I installed the front deck hatch so I have access for wiring a bow light or anything I might need. Okay, so you're probably wondering why did I choose this particular outboard? Well, this is the reason. So I like to research things and I always knew that Yamaha was excellent quality. I mean, all of the boat mechanics down here say buy Yamaha. Well, this guy here, that boat guy on YouTube is a guy that I've actually talked with some. In fact, he was the one that was trying to buy this outboard, the same exact one off of Facebook and I happened to beat him to it. But he made this video that says, are Yamaha outboards tough? And I'm gonna briefly show it to you, but you need to go check it out and see the full video because what he does to this outboard is insane. He throws it in the water. He pours sand on it. He ends up running it in the sand without any water to cool it. I mean, it is just absolutely insane. But long story short is he ended up making me a believer in Yamaha. This one video alone, I saw it and I was like, that is the outboard I want. I want something that I can beat the heck out of and it just keeps taking it. So I figured I'd share that with you. Go check out that bow guy because he makes awesome videos. Okay, so in order to use the clamps, we can use these stackable outboard clamp spacers. So this is gonna allow us to get that clamp really tight on that plate. But I might also end up bolting the outboard to the jack plate. Um, so for right now though, I can use these and I'll have them linked in the description below. And pretty soon you might see me with it bolted. Okay, so we're gonna end up mounting our outboard on. I got stainless bolts. I got my drill. This is actually an impact, so it gives me a little extra power. And I got the appropriate size bit for my outboard. Right now I'm running the bilge right now and so I got a through haul fitting with an elbow. It goes to this bilge hose. Um, you can really use any hose as long as it fits onto the fitting. And then it curls and goes down to here to, I'm using a Tsunami T500 bilge pump. I then have my wires coming up and it's going into a hole right here. Eventually I'll cover up this hole like I did over here with one of these little clam shells. Um, I believe that's even what they're called. And so underneath this clam shell is just a hole. This is not a water tight, like if this boat were to submerge, this would not hold back water. Water would still get in. This is more for rain, so when rain hits, it just runs right off. Um, so I have my outboard electrical going in to there, and then I'll have a battery in here. 
And then what I did is I put in a NOCO plug right here. And this will allow me to run this battery maintainer in here uh, or charger. And I really like these chargers. These chargers are awesome. Uh, the NOCO Genius chargers like save batteries and they bring batteries back to life. And they work for six volt or 12 volt. They automatically recognize what's plugged in. Um, so anyway, all this thing is, this thing here, all that is is a plug adapter that's watertight. So these go on like RVs and boats. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna try to um, get like some adhesive zip tie holders to hold the cables up up higher and not have a whole lot of stuff sitting on the floor in here. So I'm gonna actually try to make it where the wires are ran around the perimeter of the box. So if I still wanna set stuff in here, I can. Plus if water ever gets in the box, all my wiring isn't just sitting in water. Um, but there you can see, I actually have a battery box over there but I don't have all the wiring all figured out yet. And everyone's gonna have their own way of doing things in terms of the wiring. This is gonna be my little switch for the bilge. Um, it just has a little rubber boot on it. So it's watertight. Um, you drill a hole through and you put the switch in on the inside. So that's how that works. So the engine was running a little rough because I had some bad fuel, I think, that was still in the tank. And so my buddy Andreas here, he's helping me clean the carbs and get it kind of going. We're going to get this guy a YouTube channel. We are going to make it happen. So one of the things that we're installing right now is we're installing a fuel water separator. Because we noticed on the fuel filter right here that we had we had quite a bit of water in that fuel filter. So this guy here is a genius when it comes to the boat mechanic stuff. He he works on this stuff a lot more than I do, so he's uh, helping bring me up to speed. So so far the engine is running beautifully after Andreas ended up helping me tear into the carburetor. So this is a twin carb uh, setup on this Yamaha 25 two stroke. So it's a 25 horsepower and it has two carbs that are in sync. And one of the carbs was really filthy. Both of them really needed cleaning. So he helped me with that. And then he helped me install this fuel water separator filter system. That's gonna ensure that the, the fuel that comes out of our tank doesn't have anything we don't want in it, like water or contaminants. And then inside of the outboard, there's another little fuel filter as well. Um, but so far, it's running a lot better. Now, I still am having issues with getting up on plane and having good control of the boat. So you'll see that the cavitation plate there on the outboard is relatively small. So I ended up ordering a device called Permatrim and that's going to help keep water around the prop because when we use the on the fly jack plate to bring the outboard up and down, like so when we're bringing the outboard up and down in the water column and changing the draft, if we go up too high with the on the fly jack plate, which is what we ultimately want to do. We want to be able to run this outboard in really shallow water. If I run too shallow, then the prop sucks air and that's no good. I lose control, I lose steering, I I lose you know all my power. And so having the permatrim mounted to the cavitation plate will prevent that and it will keep water around the prop even when I have the jack plate in the higher position. Installing the permatrim on my outboard was pretty dang easy and didn't take long at all. Okay, so Marine Metalworks made me this custom aluminum trolling motor mount that has a spot for an anchor pole. It's pretty sweet. They had a quick turnaround. I just drafted and drew this up on a piece of paper. I gave them the measurements and they made it. And it will mount on the bow perfectly. So 
highly recommend these guys at Marine Metalworks. It's US made. Um, they have a quick turnaround, they ship fast, and uh, they can make pretty much whatever you dream up. Okay, so up in the bow, we have an anchor pole mount. And now we're gonna mount these anchor pole mounts right onto our pulling platform so we can anchor the stern. So that's what we're gonna do next. Just simply drilling through aluminum, half inch holes, and then bolting them on. So the whole idea of these new anchor pole mounts is that you can just take a anchor pole and you drop it through and then you're secure. So I got them on both sides here. And then I also have one in the bow.